In this video, we're going to look at how we can construct definite integrals for slightly different scenarios related to area though still. Consider for a moment this graph here and the region that's implicitly defined between or enclosed between the graph of y equals x squared, a nice parabola, and the straight line y equals two negative x. The area is clearly well defined and it seems something similar to what we've done before, but it is a bit different. Previously, we've studied intervals from A to B, and we've looked at the area between the x-axis and a graph. We haven't looked specifically at the area between two graphs. Fortunately, we're gonna see the process of building an integral to represent that area is straightforward, and we're going to arrive at it in the same way we did before by looking at some estimating rectangles and then turning that into a definite integral. Here's that same diagram again. And if we imagine taking one point, so somewhere in the interval from negative two to one, we're gonna freeze one point and we're gonna call that x sub i. Remembering that's how we labeled subdivisions of the entire interval before. Now what we'd like to know is the height of the rectangle that we could build enclosed in that area, and say using here a left-hand rule. We'd like you to take a moment to look at this rectangle and imagine how you would compute the height under this abstract scenario of knowing just the x-coordinate where you're building it, and see if any of these formulas make sense for that height. Take a moment, and then we'll come back in a second to check in. All right. Well, the key thing for height is to recognize how it gets constructed. If you want a height difference, you take the upper y value and subtract off the lower y value. Well, the upper y value belongs to the curve two minus x. So we're gonna need a two minus x as the starting point. And then we're going to subtract off the coordinate on the parabola, which is the x squared. So this function here is going to give us the height of this rectangle, no matter what x value we plug in. This may seem a bit counterintuitive. We usually think of quadratics being bigger than linear functions, but if you look specifically on the domain we're talking about, you can clearly see that the line defined by two minus x is above the parabola y equals x squared. Keep that formula in mind as we move to the next page. We're now going to take that formula for the heights and build our left estimate for the area. Remembering that our height is, has to be combined with a width on each interval, we would get a sum of what we just found, two minus xi's minus the xi squareds, all of that times a delta x. That is our height that we just found, and that would be our width. Taking a look at the picture down here, as again as a reminder, the delta x we can be a bit more precise on. We're going to take the interval from negative two to one. So our delta x is as wide as one minus minus two or three, if you prefer, and divided by the number of intervals that we're gonna subdivide that into. We don't have a specific number here, we're doing it in the abstract, so we just leave it as over n. The key thing being, we know what that is. And if we want to add a few more ingredients, we would add the uh, indices. We would start at the first rectangle and go to the last rectangle. Just as a quick notation thing, in the left-hand rule, we typically started counting a little to the left. We called it i minus one. Other than that, you can see the relationship between our function here, two minus coming from the straight line, minus the parabola, which is the lower graph on the interval we're concerned with. That combination gives us the height and the width comes from a delta x. The reason we don't stress too much about the particular notation, especially the subscripts here, is because we really don't want to use this if we can avoid it. What we really want to get to is the generic integral form, where literally we take everything we wrote here and get away from the subscripts replace the delta x with what we call dx. This is what happens when we take the limit as n goes to infinity 
or the limit as delta x goes to zero. And then we replace that summation sign with an integral, in this case here, starting from negative two and going up to x equals one. These are x coordinates. We usually don't write this explicitly. Sometimes it can be helpful though to remind us what these numbers represent. So what we've done is we found a way to turn a clearly defined geometric area on this picture into a formula that we can express using this new integral notation. How do we evaluate that integral? We're still getting there, but at least we can now define it in a systematic way. And once we know how to evaluate integrals, we'll be able to go back and compute these kinds of areas. It's also worth noting the structure. If you look at this, now that we don't have any of the subscript i's running around, this is the formula for our y upper, and then minus our y lower. So once you've seen the pattern, if someone asks us to write down an integral that represents this area, you can immediately write it down knowing the pattern that we're following now, or the system that's gonna get us to this place through the system of building rectangles first. But once you've done it a few times, you can skip the rectangles and go straight to the formulas.